Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about the state of Texas in the 2020 presidential election. This is because Joe Biden has now overtaken President Trump for the second time in the 2020 election cycle. I did talk about this the last time he overtook the president. He overtook him. He was leading by 0.2% for a couple of days. And then right after that, President Trump retook the lead in Texas. However, in the past couple of days, it was pretty much an even race in Texas. But um, as of today, Biden now has a 0.8% lead today. This is because of a new poll from Morning Consult that came out showing Biden up 2% over Donald Trump, 47% over 45% for Trump. Uh, this poll down here showing Trump plus 7. This is a poll from May, but this newest one from July shows a Biden up 2 points um, over President Trump in the 2020 election. So basically, the state of Texas is very important because Texas is... You know, it's a state that Trump cannot lose in 2020. If Trump loses the state to Joe Biden on election night, he will lose the election. And just to show this, I will be looking at here. This is on your screen. This is the electoral map um, for 2020. Basically, I have only used solid and likely states. Basically, for Biden, all of his solid and likely states are all of the states that Hillary Clinton won in 2016. And all of uh, all the red states are Trump's solid and likely states. And all of these gray states, these are all the toss-up states, and all states that Trump won in 2016. However, many of these states are now polling in favor of Vice President Joe Biden, like Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Florida, and Arizona. But if Biden were to win in the state of Texas, I think this would, you know, it would, it would just give Biden the election. If he were to win Texas, let's look at this, 38 electoral votes. It would put Biden all the way up at 270. He would win the election. Trump can win every other state and still lose the election if he loses the state of Texas. In addition to that, I think Texas is probably one of the most conservative toss-up states. So I think that if Texas goes, Georgia will go, North Carolina will go, uh, Florida, of course, will go, Arizona, Ohio, Iowa, maybe, maybe not. But I think that almost all of these states will go to Joe Biden if he were to win the state of Texas. I think... I think Joe Biden could definitely outperform Bill Clinton's 1996 margins and be very close to um, Johnson's 1964 margins. So if he wins Texas, it would basically be a landslide for Joe Biden. He would definitely outperform Barack Obama in 2008. And uh, yeah, 270 electoral votes, all he needs is Clinton states and Texas. However, I think that the biggest reason as to why I think Texas will actually have a large chance of going to Joe Biden um, you know, Texas has not gone to a Democrat since 1976 when Jimmy Carter won it. Ever since uh, Ronald Reagan flipped the state in 1980, no, every Republican has carried the state of Texas in every single election after that. No matter how much of a Democratic landslide it was, they never lost Texas. Texas has basically become the Democratic Party's California. Of course, it's around uh, tw 17 less electoral votes. However, 38, that is still quite a bit. Um, so I think that, you know, probably the main reason why I think Biden will actually be able to carry Texas is because if we look at electoral history in 2016, uh, Trump led by 11.7% in the polls. He, he won the state by 9%. He underperformed by 2.7%. In 2012, Mitt Romney um, was leading 16.7% over Barack Obama. He won the state by 15.8%. And then in 2008, John McCain led in this state by 13%, won by 11.8% over Barack Obama. So basically, as you can see here, um, the Republican Party's candidates have always underperformed, at least in the past three elections, um, against the Democratic candidate. So basically, they have all been leading in the polls. However, on election night, they have all underperformed their polling margins. Um, however, before, even this was really not a problem um, before because in you know, 2016, 2008, 2012, and in basically every election up until 1980, the Republican Party has always had a very large, um, you know, a very large polling um, average over the Democratic candidate. They've always, you know, been able to win the state with solid margins. You know, like in 2012, Mitt Romney won by 15.8 percent. However, in 2016, you know, Trump won by 9 percent, um, moving Texas down to only a likely state for the Republican Party. And Texas, yes, it is becoming more and more blue and uh, going more and more to the left. However, I do, I really did not think that it would be 2020. Um, when the Democrats would actually be able to flip the state. I think it would definitely be at least, you know, 2028, 2032. I did not expect it to come this early. But I think the 2020 Biden definitely has a chance of winning this state. Because if you look at in the state of Texas, you know, it's there's more and more minorities moving in. And minorities almost, you know, 100% translate to Democratic voters. 
And I think one of the other issues as to why I do not think Trump will be able to regain his uh, lead in this state is because if we look at the coronavirus graph for Texas, 675 people died yesterday in the state of Texas. Texas now has 6,306 deaths from coronavirus and 403,000 total cases in the state. To put this into perspective, there were only 80,000 cases ever, 83,000 I believe, in China ever. So there are now more cases in the state of Texas than a country with 1.3, 1.4 billion people. Texas now has five times the amount of cases as the most populous country in the world. And, you know, if things are going to, you know, continue like this, Texas is not going to vote for Joe Biden. Because, you know, seeing the, you know, the aftermath, you know, economically and, you know, with just the pure human loss, um, because of Trump's, you know, bad response to the coronavirus, I think many Republican and many independent voters are going to sway away from Donald Trump. And I think that many um, never Biden voters will actually vote for Joe Biden just because Donald Trump is not doing the job he should be doing. Um, you know, it's not all his fault. However, he is the man in charge of the country. He is the president. You know, nobody's going to blame Joe Biden for this because he's not running anything. He hasn't been elected. He's, he doesn't have to do anything. And he hasn't done anything because he can't. But Donald Trump is the president. And if we look at this, it's not just in Texas. So you can't just blame, you know, the governor of Texas. It is the entire country. The coronavirus is getting worse everywhere. And if it's, you know, if it's a national situation and it's just escalating, you know, all around the country, that is you know, because of some ineffectiveness from the national government and mainly the president who has basically um, been trying to um, put this, trying to, trying to basically, um, you know, move our attentions away from this crisis that we're facing right now. Um, but, you know, it's not working because, you know, we're still, we're, you know, five, six months into quarantine and we are still not able to go outside. So, you know, I think that this is definitely going to affect Trump in a very negative way. I think he's pushing a lot of voters away because of this. And if we were to look at the national polling data right here, Biden leads by 8.2% nationwide. This is like a never seen before lead because in you know 2012 with Barack Obama, probably the most popular Democrat in the entire country, he only had you know five, six point leads at his best over Mitt Romney. You know, um, in the last couple of weeks, people thought that Mitt Romney was going to win. You know, Mitt Romney was polling ahead of Barack Obama for the last couple of weeks, up until the very last week. That is when Barack Obama um, overtook Romney in the national polling and won the election. However, if the election was held, you know, one week earlier, Barack Obama would not have won re-election. But, you know, looking at 2020, Biden has had this consistent 8.2% lead over uh, Donald Trump, you know, 8 to 10% in like the last two months. It really has not changed, and this is pretty surprising because how much... Um, polling tends to change in presidential elections. However, with Trump, you know, his snag, you know, his stagnating base, you know, his base is basically around 40% of people who will always support him, which is why his approval rating has never dropped, you know, too much de um, below 30%. And c compared to other presidents, Trump's approval ratings actually stayed pretty consistent, you know, at around 40 to 45% this entire time. But I think that, you know, 8.2% not looking good for Trump. Trump cannot win an election with 41% of the vote, but Biden can with 50% of the vote. So, um, yeah, I think Trump definitely needs to do something about this. He definitely needs to improve his coronavirus response. I think that if he were to even have a chance at winning the election, um, he would need to win the state of Texas. Texas is probably his most important state right now, just because of how uh, vulnerable it is for him. But I think that if, you know, Trump wants to win his re-election, he needs to do something about the coronavirus. Because if, you know, if Americans do not see improvements um, by November, I think they're, they're going to want someone new to, um, to deal with it. And, you know, of course, Trump not being able to deal with it, they're going to replace him no matter how conservative or how Republican they are. They're going to want someone else, which is why I think that the situation is looking more and more... Um, abysmal for Donald Trump, considering that there's, you know, less than 100 days until the election now. So I think that definitely Donald Trump needs to do something about this. And, you know, looking at, of course, you know, historical, you know, trends, Trump will underperform in the state of Texas. If he underperforms, he, you know, he has no chance of winning the state and Biden will win the election. So I think all signs are pointing towards a Biden landslide victory right now, at least 350, 360 electoral votes at this point. 
However, I think, you know, with just still three months, I think a lot can change. However, um, looking at, you know, this election as a whole, not much really has changed. So we're just going to have to look and see. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as well as subscribing to my channel. I would really appreciate that. And I will see you in the next video.